We have released Trims 037, and as always, we have for you a short video going through the main changes. This release has over 90 PRs from over 20 different contributors. Most of the work in this release focused on internal improvements and refactorings, but there are some user-facing changes as well. So let's have a look at them. And let's start with the supported configurations. Strims 037 supports Kubernetes 1.21 and newer, and the last tested version was Kubernetes 1.28.1. The supported Kafka versions are Kafka 3.5.1, 3.5.0, 3.4.1, and 3.4.0. What's new in this release is that we now support the PPC 64LE platform. One of the main changes in this release is that the Stable Connect Identities feature gate is moving into the beta phase and is now enabled by default. This feature gate was originally introduced in Strums 034 and it used Strums pod sets instead of deployments in the Kafka Connect and Kafka Mirror Maker 2 clusters. That means that it's also using stable pod names instead of random names, and that helps to reduce the disruptions during rolling updates. If needed, these feature gates can still be disabled manually. Another big change happened to the connector auto restart feature. In previous releases, Strumzy always tried to restart the connectors only seven times. And if they were still failed after that, then it was up to the user to restart them manually. This behavior changed in Strumzy 037, and we will now try to keep restarting the connectors forever. If you want to limit the maximum number of restarts, or restore the original behavior, you can use the new max restarts field and set it to 7 or to whatever number of restarts you prefer. Keep in mind that this applies to both the regular Kafka connectors, which are part of the Kafka Connect, but also to the Kafka Mirror Maker 2 connectors. We also improve the information which we share in the status section of the Kafka custom resource. We now include two new fields. One of them shows the Kafka version used by this Kafka cluster, and the other one shows the version of the Strumzy operator, which did the last successful reconciliation. These versions should be useful to determine if operator or Kafka upgrade was completed successfully. Let's have a quick look at how this looks in a real Kafka cluster. I have one already deployed here, and when I list the pods, you can see that they are all running. And when I get the YAML version of the Kafka custom resource and check the status section, you can see that I now have here a field called Kafka version which tells me that I'm running Kafka 3.5.1. And I have also this field operator last successful version, which tells me that the last operator version which completed successfully a reconciliation was Strums 0.37.0. So that's how it looks in a real Kafka custom resource. Another thing we improved in this release is how the CPU capacity is generated in the cruise control configuration. The way it is done is now using first the user configured capacity in the cruise control configuration. If that's not set, it will automatically take over and use the resource requests of the Kafka pods. And if the requests are not set, but the limits are set, then it will use the limits. And if none of these values are set, then the CPU capacity will be set to the default value of 1. There are also many other smaller changes. The support for open tracing has been removed, and if you want to use tracing, please use the open telemetry support instead. We also updated many dependencies. One notable change is update to the cruise control, which finally has a release with updated snake YAML dependency, which doesn't anymore contain the snake YAML CVE. There are also many smaller improvements and bug fixes. And that's it for this release. Don't forget to star us on GitHub, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.